家好，谢谢。If you win throw-ins, you will get goal-scoring opportunities, or you will get fouls created against the opposing team. What you will get is them bent for defense before you ever even have a throw-in taken place. If you continually win throw-ins, they're already going to think defense. Once you've got a team thinking defense, you've got to buy control. Okay, you're, you've got to under control. So the most important thing. We can possibly do in the number one, in the throwing is the number one has to go and be where he belongs and know what his responsibilities are before the ball is ever thrown in. There is nothing more frustrating for me as a coach now or as a player when I was not playing one myself than to see my number one dragging behind company, okay, and not get into the throw in to be prepared for the umpire to throw the ball in. The next person has to be there has to be my back, because the two things we have to guarantee ourselves on throw-ins is we need a number one and we need a back. We need to know that our back is in position, prepared to, to defend our, 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 our the, the throw-in if we do not win it. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to go with what I call the classic throw-in to start with. We go to the throw-in. So here's my number one. Here's my number two. Here's my number three. Now, what we need to take into consideration is how hard does this umpire throw the ball in? What kind of grass are we on? And how good is the opposing team we're playing in relationship to throw-ins? If the opposing team is relatively strong, then my back should be doing two things. He should be playing wide, and he should be bent more out of the lineup as compared to being bent more into the lineup, so that his first move is towards defense as compared to offense. I do not like my number one to line up flat, because that means that his chances of being able to go out of the lineup in a motion towards my goal are quite slim. What I would love to do is have my number one bent at about a 30 degree angle. What I do not like to see my number one do is take his mallet and ever drop it on the near side because he's lined up on the right side of the throw-in. As in the case of the number, number one on the blues, if he lines up on this side, I do not want him to have him drop his mallet over to the near side. I would rather have him take his mallet and drop the mallet under his horse's neck and have the mallet pushed forward because what will happen is the opposing number one will ride into him with his mallet down and now lock his mallet in place. And now he can't pull his mallet out. All right? We will go with the number one. His objective is one of two. One, ball first or man first. If the opposing number one is stronger than he is, chances are his captain is going to ask him to go man first. Meaning, don't be looking so much for the ball. Deny access to the ball for the opposing player. If, on the other hand, my red number one is superior in capability, not only in his own mind, but in reality, to the opposing number one, then what I would probably do is say, look ball first, but don't let this number one blow out unmolested. But look ball first. Ball comes in. Once it passes the number one stirrup, he is not to attempt to access the ball. It is no longer his responsibility. He is not to look over his shoulder, step his horse back, stay in position. Okay? He is to attempt to break into a receiving area somewhere downfield. Standard distance would probably be 25, 30 yards and fading back towards the lane that I call the inside of the field. Not going out wide because then he is further from the goal than he was when the throw in took place. My number two is to guarantee that he does not allow the opposing number two to slip unmolested out of the lineup with the ball. Now, he can slip unmolested out of the lineup if his team, the Reds team, is in control of the ball and he knows it. He can turn the blue player loose. 
But if he turns the blue player loose and the red team does not have the ball, no matter how fast, how quick, how strong this four is on the red team, he's in, he's in dire straits because he himself can't just break to back as soon as the ball is thrown in. He's supposed to wait momentarily first, okay? The number three is in the same position. Now, the number three has the option of fading into the lineup or fading out of the lineup or even turning it 90 degrees to the lineup depending on which, what he wishes to do, okay? Areas of change that take place have more to do with angle of entrance to the throwing than anything else. Two or three things that you want to always know. If your horse is parked and dead still, then you're parked and dead still. As soon as the umpire's hand starts to move, your horse should be moving. It doesn't necessarily have to move forward, but it has to move in some direction because trying to get 900 pounds of parked weight in motion is much more difficult than having the motion already established. Number two, we must know what our primary responsibility is. Are we man first, ball first, zone first? Man first, deny access. Ball first, go to the ball. Zone first means no matter what, I'm guaranteeing I'm covering this area as a bat. I'm covering this area as a one. If you lose two throw-ins in a row, dynamically. I don't mean because there's been a little bounce in the play or one of your teammates mishits a ball. I am talking about the, the other team dominates the throw-ins, two throw-ins in a row. Then when you come back to a third throw-in, your team must change something. Change the angle of approach. Change a player around to a different position. Worst case scenario, foul hook the opposing team in the throw in and let them have a penalty five because you're better off knowing you can defend a penalty five than it is to give them free access to a throw in where you really don't have control of what's going on. Okay? One of the main areas of concern in throw ins is once you receive the ball, do not put the ball into a group of horses because no matter how hard you hit it, you will never go through a horse. And when you put a ball back into a group of horses, not only are you possibly making things more difficult for the horses and players, but the reality is you as a teammate are not helping your team out because we become a wheel of fortune where we really don't know whether we're going to get big money or we're going to go bankrupt because we don't know what's going to happen when we hit into horses. So if we control this throwing, the main aspect is Guarantee that we move the ball in an area where we don't hit opposing horses or our own horses so that we no longer know what's going to take place. I think the most common error that most, most, most players make until they reach what I consider to be the true professional level where you're looking at all players who are self-sustaining as players, that, that, who are played in in, in, in national to international levels of 16 to 20 to, to higher. The main mistake they make is, is one, they aren't prepared when they get to the lineup to fulfill whatever obligation their team has initially created for them. At, or number two is, as soon as the ball is thrown in, the ball becomes their major focus of attention. Before the throw-in takes place, the ball has been, let's presume under most cases, is the ball been scored. So you have approximately 9 to 11 seconds from the time the ball has been scored till you arrive at the throw-in. During that 9 to 11 seconds, you should be doing everything you can to gather yourself together. Your horse, yourself, your commitment. If you have been just scored against, it's all the more important to go there and win the throw-in. Know what your commitment is and understand that once the ball has passed your strip, you as a number one are not responsible. Once the ball has been locked up and the throw in, you as a four should be going to back. Once you have an opportunity to move the ball in the throw in, your main objective is don't create chaos by hitting into horses or players or bang the ball away without a recognition that you're probably giving the ball up to the opposing player. 